Helicobacter pylori, or H. pylori, is a type of bacteria that infects the stomach lining. While it might sound alarming to know that a bacterial infection is living in your stomach, H. pylori is actually quite common. It's estimated that about 60 to 70% of the world's population may be infected. However, many people never experience symptoms or complications from it, and they live with the bacteria for years without even knowing they have it. But for some people, this bacteria can lead to significant health issues, such as peptic ulcers, chronic gastritis, or even stomach cancer. It's estimated that about 20 to 30% of people infected develop symptoms. Helicobacter pylori has a spiral-shaped body, and it primarily lives in the lining of your stomach. What's unique about it is that it can survive in the highly acidic environment of the stomach, which is too harsh for most bacteria. The bacterium has a special way of protecting itself by producing an enzyme called urease, which neutralizes stomach acid around it. When you're infected with H. pylori, the bacteria can cause inflammation of the stomach lining, which is a condition known as gastritis. If left untreated, H. pylori infections can lead to more serious issues, like stomach ulcers or even stomach cancer. Causes of H. pylori infection The exact cause of H. pylori infection isn't fully understood, but it's believed to spread through several routes. The most common mode of transmission is thought to be person-to-person, -person, either through the oral-oral or fecal-oral route. This means the bacteria can be passed through saliva, vomit, or fecal matter of an infected person. This can happen via close contact, such as kissing, or through shared utensils. Another potential route of transmission is through contaminated food or water. In areas with inadequate sanitation, H. pylori can contaminate the water supply, leading to widespread infection. Some studies have also suggested that the bacteria might be transmitted through raw or undercooked foods. The bacteria can also be spread through direct contact with contaminated objects. For example, if an infected person doesn't wash their hands properly after using the bathroom and then touches objects, they can spread the bacteria to others who come into contact with these objects. Once inside the stomach, the bacteria produce enzymes that neutralize the stomach's acid, making it easier for the bacteria to survive and multiply. Over time, the infection can damage the stomach lining, leading to ulcers or chronic inflammation. It's estimated that only about 10-15% to 15 of infected individuals will develop peptic ulcers, and an even smaller percentage will develop gastric cancer. Symptoms of H. pylori infection while many people with H. pylori won't experience any symptoms, others will develop problems, particularly with their digestive systems. One of the most noticeable symptoms of H. pylori infection is a burning pain in the stomach. This pain is often felt between meals or at night when your stomach is empty. This is caused by the bacteria irritating the lining of your stomach, and it can be relieved temporarily by eating food or taking antacids. Many people with H. pylori experience bloating or feel full even after eating small amounts of food. Excessive burping is another common symptom, and it's caused by the bacteria producing gas as they disrupt your stomach's normal digestive processes. Feeling nauseous or having the urge to vomit can also be a sign of H. pylori infection. In some cases, the infection can cause vomiting, especially if the stomach lining becomes severely inflamed. Because of the discomfort caused by the bacteria, many people with H. pylori infection lose their appetite, leading to unintentional weight loss. In more severe cases, H. pylori infection can lead to peptic ulcers, which can cause more intense abdominal pain. You may also notice more severe symptoms like blood in your stool, which may look black or tarry, or vomiting blood. These are signs of a bleeding ulcer and require immediate medical attention. Diagnosis of H. pylori infection Diagnosing H. pylori infection involves several methods, each with its own advantages and limitations. Number 1. Breath test One of the most common and non-invasive ways to detect H. pylori is through a urea breath test. During this test, you'll be asked to drink a special solution containing urea, which is a substance that H. pylori breaks down into carbon dioxide. After drinking the solution, you'll breathe into a bag, and if the bacteria are present, the carbon dioxide levels in your breath will be elevated, 
This test is highly accurate and can be used to diagnose active infection and to confirm eradication after treatment. Number two, stool antigen test. A stool antigen test looks for proteins associated with H. pylori in a sample of your stool. It's a simple and effective way to detect the bacteria. They're especially helpful in diagnosing H. pylori in children. Number three, blood tests. Blood tests can detect antibodies to H. pylori, indicating that the person has been exposed to the bacteria at some point. However, these tests can't distinguish between past and current infections, making them less useful for confirming eradication after treatment. Number four, endoscopy and biopsy. In more severe cases, or if your doctor suspects an ulcer or stomach cancer, an endoscopy might be necessary. During this procedure, a thin, flexible tube with a camera is inserted through the mouth into the stomach and duodenum. This allows the doctor to visually inspect the lining of these organs and take small tissue samples, or biopsies, for further testing. These biopsies can be examined under a microscope to look for H. pylori and to check for any precancerous changes in the stomach lining. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Treatment for H. pylori infection. The good news is that H. pylori infections are treatable, and most people can expect a full recovery if they follow the prescribed course of treatment. The treatment for H. pylori infection typically involves a combination of medications. The standard approach is known as triple therapy, which includes two antibiotics and a proton pump inhibitor, PPI. Proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs, are medications that reduce the amount of acid your stomach produces. This helps the stomach lining heal and also makes the antibiotics more effective. So, the antibiotics work to kill the bacteria, while the PPI reduces stomach acid production, creating a less hostile environment for H. pylori and allowing the stomach lining to heal. Commonly used antibiotics include clarithromycin, amoxicillin, and metronidazole. As for the PPI, your doctor will likely choose between omeprazole, lansoprazole, or pantoprazole. In cases where initial treatment fails, quadruple therapy may be used. This involves adding a bismuth compound to the triple therapy regimen. This works by coating the stomach lining and protecting it from the bacteria, while also helping to kill the H. pylori. The treatment usually lasts for 10 to 14 days, but it's important to take the full course of antibiotics, even if symptoms improve before the treatment is complete. Stopping treatment early can lead to antibiotic resistance and treatment failure. After treatment, a follow-up test, usually a urea breath test or stool antigen test, is often performed to confirm that the infection has been successfully eradicated. This is typically done at least four weeks after completing treatment to ensure accurate results. Prevention of H. pylori infection. While there's no vaccine to prevent H. pylori infection, you can take several measures to reduce your risk of contracting the bacteria. Practicing good hygiene is crucial here. This includes washing hands thoroughly with soap and water, especially before eating and after using the bathroom. In areas where water safety is a concern, drinking water from safe sources is essential. This might mean using bottled water or boiling water before consumption. Similarly, eating properly cooked foods and avoiding raw or undercooked meats can help reduce the risk of infection. Also, since H. pylori can be spread through saliva, avoid sharing eating utensils or drinking from the same cup as someone who may be infected. Now, we want to hear from you. Have you or someone you know ever dealt with H. pylori? What symptoms did you experience and how was it treated? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.